When we had left off, we used our FOIL method on some binomials in order to get a circle equation that looks like this. Now we saw that starting from an equation that looks more closely to the actual formula, we're able to get this one right here, and so these are actually this is a circle formula. However, we also want to know how to take this form and bring it back to our original so we can get those a, the h, the k, and the r values that we would need to get our center points being h and k and our radius being r. So as I mentioned in the slides, what we did in order to get our formula like this is actually the same is going to be the same or very very similar steps we take to go backwards. So the first thing we need to do is separate this equation into three different parts. We have the parts that have an x in it. So these are going to be our x values. So we're going to have that over here on the left. We have the parts of our graph that have our y values in it. So that'd be the y squared, the negative 2y. We're going to set that up over here. And just to separate it off, uh, it's not the most important thing to have it separated, but we're going to section off this 26 because we just want to make sure we don't touch it. So we're going to have that over here. So now looking at x squared plus 6x, if we try and match up these x values to this x value here, we're a bit far away. Along the formula, there's only one x. There's There shouldn't be two, the x shouldn't be squared, so we want to set up something close to this. So this is completing the square. Basically what we want to do is take the number next to this x value. Now, do keep in mind that if there is no x, then that would be 0. But ultimately, we take this value right here, this 6, because it's in front of the x, and we want to divide it by 2. This gives us a brand new value that we're going to actually be working with, and we're going to call it r. As I mentioned in the slides, this stand is going to stand for the term root because this is our the root of our binomial. So r is the root. And we're going to see what I mean by root more specifically in just a moment, but just remember that right now the way we get our r value is taking the number next to our variable and dividing by 2. Now, again, this part is a little counterintuitive. Uh, we want to add uh, our r squared, but we also want to subtract our r squared to the values we're given. So we're going to use x squared plus 6x, and then we want to add r squared. In this case, r is 3, so that would be 3 squared, and we also want to subtract 3 squared as well. Now this is counterintuitive because when we combine these two values together, we just get zero. So what's the point of having it there if it doesn't actually change anything? It all depends on the perspective. By perspective, I mean parentheses, because if we set up our parentheses as such, based off of PEMDAS, we do whatever is in the parentheses first. But based on our different properties, I believe it was the, based on the properties we could see that parentheses between a bunch of addition and subtraction doesn't actually change anything. So given that that's a fact, we now have a complete perfect square on the left. This perfect square can be written in the form of whatever the variable is, plus our r value. In this case, our r value is 3. 
we put that in parentheses and square it. And if you want to double check your work, always remember that x plus 3 uh, squared is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3, in which case we could use our FOIL method to expand that out. Those are the same steps we took in the last lesson to get to this point, but we have x plus 3 squared. We also don't want to forget that we have a minus 3 squared now, otherwise uh, this isn't the same equation. So we drop everything down and we now have an equation like this. The, this is our new x values. Although it looks different, this is the has the same equivalency to this. All we had to do was find our root term and you can see that our root term just ends up here. That is why we call it a root term because it ends up inside our binomial. So then we want to look at the y values. We're going to do the exact same thing. We want to find our root term. So we take the number next to our very our single variable. Now it is important to remember that it's a single variable. Here we have y squared. We don't want to look at the y squared. We want to look at just the y. Here we want to look at just the x, not the x squared. So in front of the y, we have a negative 2. So we take the negative 2, we divide it by 2, and we get negative 1. That is our new root value. So we then take our original y values of y squared minus 2y, and we add and subtract negative 1 squared. So we're going to add it, and we're adding negative 1 squared, but we're also subtracting negative 1 squared. Now do remember again, it is a little counterintuitive, but once we add the parentheses, this left part of our function becomes a perfect square, so we could write it in the form of y plus our root right here, our root negative 1. And then we square it. Not forgetting to drop down this subtraction of the root being squared. So now it's a little confusing here because I'm making sure to show that this is a negative 1. It is important to note that it is negative 1, but I'm going to do the simplification here because adding a negative number is the exact same thing as just subtracting that number. Uh, when we take negative 1 and we square it, well, negative 1 times negative 1, a negative times a negative is a positive, and 1 times 1 is just 1. So here we are subtracting 1. 26 is just going to be dropped all the way down because there's nothing to do with it just yet. Now that we have all of our values separated, we want to combine them. Mm -hmm. So take a moment to take a look at this because I do need to set up a little bit of room. but now we are combining each of these separate entities where we take that the new set of x values we have being the x plus 3 squared minus that 3 squared we take the y minus 1 squared minus 1 and that 26 back into an equation just like we have here bringing them back in. So what I mean by bringing them back in is over here we would substitute in x plus 3 squared minus 3 squared into the x part of our equation we would have the plus that is between them we then have 
our y section. So that is the y minus 1 squared minus 1 that we have up here. We have our equals. And then we have our final section that is just our regular number, what everything is equal to, the 26. We now have the equation once more, written slightly different, but still the same in the end. Well, now that it's all one equation, we have a couple of things we could simplify together. Now, the x plus 3 uh, is in parentheses and it's being squared. So we can't really get into there anymore. But if we look back at our original formula, we have an x and a number in parentheses being squared. So we don't want to touch that because that's part of our original formula. And right here as well, this y minus 1 that's squared, we have the y and a number, y and the number being squared. So that's part of our original formula. We don't want to touch that either. So we're going to set those down as constants now. We're not touching these anymore because they are in our original formula. Now what isn't in our original formula on the left side are numbers, numbers outside of these parentheses. So let's combine them for now. So in this case, negative 3 squared, uh, m subtracting a 3 squared, not negative 3 squared. Those are very different, keep that in mind. We're subtracting a 3 squared, and when we square 3, we end up with 9. So we have a minus 9 and a minus 1, and that is equal to 26. So in this case, negative 9 and negative 1 can combine together to give us a negative 10. And we still have all of our other constants here, part of our formula already. And if you could already take a guess what we need to do in order to get rid of because we could also see that 26, there should be a number on the right. Some number squared, our radius being squared. So it may not necessarily be 26 at the end, but we that does match up. So now we need to get rid of this negative 10, and we want to move it to the other side because that's where the number makes sense. That's where having a standard number makes sense. So we're going to now add 10 to both sides so that on the right we end up with 26 plus 10 which is 36 on the left we have our formula of one of y minus 1 squared and an x plus 3 squared giving us our original formula where you can take this a step further and square rooting uh, the 36 so that you can get its original value of 6 squared. So that is us taking it backwards. That is us doing the completing the square method. It, uh, it has that counterintuitive part. It has that part that seems like it doesn't make sense at first. But if you continue through, you'll see that it does. You'll see that we get a perfect square out of our equation. The, the only thing I want to note is that it's not necessarily the case that there will be no numbers on the left side. That you won't end up with an equation like x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 10y plus 7 is equal to some number. All you would have to do is make sure you have all the standard numbers on the right. So your regular numbers, your twos, your fives, your tens, whatever. This seven here, you would move it to the right side of the equals so that on the left is only left with variables. Only numbers that you can don't necessarily know the answer for, those variables so that you could split it up between x's and y's and find out your perfect square for them eventually bringing it all together so that you get your final proper circle formula equation 
I hope this kind of closer step-by-step -step format for it was helpful for those of you who are having some trouble with it. We're going to continue doing a little bit of work with this, but also continuing into circles, especially that confusing set of the secant chords, tangents, and all of that stuff. So hopefully this works out. I hope you're enjoying your day. Stay safe and healthy.